Hi, I'm Ferdinand the Carpet Stacker, and welcome to the preview video for The Lords of Rock. This is a gaming project from Solar Flare Games that is seeking funding on Kickstarter. As a disclaimer, this is a preview copy of the game, so the content and the artwork is not yet final. So with that, let's get rocking! The Lords of Rock is a game by Dave Killingsworth and published by Solar Flare Games. It plays from 2 to 5 players with your recommended age of 8 years plus, and plays around 20 to 40 minutes. In Lords of Rock, you control a band of a famous pantheon such as the Aztecs or the Great Ones from the Cthulhu Mythos. You perform at a venue and gain fan souls based on your performance. Beat a band to outperform other bands to collect the most souls by playing your best set list. After a number of venues are played, the game ends. The band who scored the most in souls wins the game. To begin the game, place the soul stones on the table. Then shuffle and place the venues and set list cards. Then all players select a pantheon they want to play and build a band. Players then first select a lead and then fill the rest of the band based on the four skills, guitar, bass, drums, and vocals. Everyone then receives four venue cards and seven set list cards. Next, it's time to determine the anchor band. The last person to attend a concert becomes the anchor band. The game begins with the first player who is to the left of the anchor band. Also, every band has a unique ability connected to their pantheon. These abilities can only be used once a game, so use them at the right time. Now let's take a look at an example of play. In this 4 player example, the Greek band led by Zeus plays the venue card, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. This is a large venue. The band with the best performance here will earn 5 million souls or 5 points. Then 2nd place gets 4 points, 3rd receives 3 points, and last place gets 2 points. Victor of this venue can draw 1 extra card for the next venue. Hand limits does apply. Lastly, this venue only scores 4 skill points in vocals, bass, and drums. Skill points going towards guitar do not score. But if one band member has an unused primary skill, they may use their secondary skill. Moving on. Since Zeus played the venue, the turn passes to the band to the left, which are the Egyptians who now can play set list cards. Set list cards can be played once a turn per person in order. Players have an option to play cards or pass. Positive cards are played face down while negative cards are played face up. And in this demonstration, all of our cards will be played face up. Isis's band plays smoke in the sky and place it in front of her. This gives her base skill plus one and since it was played on a large venue, the bonus plus two for base activates instead. On Freak's turn, she plays no warm up on Isis. This gives a negative one score to Isis's base. Quetzalcoatl plays Nirvana. A sitless card with a pie figure gives a plus one point to all active skills. So in this case, the guitar skill does not apply and Quetzalcoatl's band receives three more points. Gods passes this turn since their lead member cannot use his skill and they probably want to save their cards on a later round. A band who passes can no longer play cards, although a band who passes can respond to negatively played cards by playing positive cards. It's Isis's turn again and she plays bootleg DVD which at the end of the round gives her one soul point. Frigg plays lightning failure on Zeus. Even though Zeus have pass, a pass player can play in response to a negative card played on them. He plays every Keisha has its thorns, gaining one point through his base skill. Quetzalcoatl plays the last countdown, which adds two points to his vocals. Zeus has already passed, so he doesn't play any more cards. The turn passes to Isis, and she plays Flat Fingered Rift on Quetzalcoatl and selects a negative two to affect his base skill. Frigg plays Cold Day and Duat. Her drums earn plus one point. If this was a small venue, then she would earn a plus two bonus instead. Quetzalcoatl uses his Pantheon ability. His ability reads, flip this card over and move a single negative card played in your set list to another player's Pantheon set list, up to a maximum value of 2. The round continues as long as bands play cards or until all players have passed. At this point, all the values are tallied up. Let's use Isis's band for an example. First, add up any primary skill that can be used at the current venue. Any band member that doesn't use their primary skill may use their secondary skill if it can be used in the venue. Then all set list cards are totaled. Isis's band total is 18. Now all bands compare their score to see who performed the best. First is Frigg with 20 points. 
Isis and Quetzalcoatl tied for second, and Zeus came in last. With the tie, both second and third place points are added and split between both players. In this case, Isis and Quetzalcoatl earn 4 soul points. If any set list cards have souls on them, those players collect those now. And since Frigg is the winner of this round, she gets one extra set list card for the next venue. The venue is now finished. The venue and plate set list cards are discarded. In a normal situation, the band gets ready for the new round with the next player playing the venue and everyone getting new cards. If the anchor band has played their first venue card, everyone discards all the venue cards and draw four new ones and the game continues as normal. If this was the anchor band's second played venue, the game is now over. To determine the winner, the player adds all their soul points. If there is a tie, then the tied players battle out in a tiebreaker round. The player with the most souls is the winner. And that concludes our preview for the Lords of Rock. If you're interested in this game and like to support it, you can visit the Kickstarter page in the link below. Also, I'd like to thank you for joining me in this video. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it. On behalf of the Cardboard Stacker team, I'd like to thank Dates Killingsworth and Solar Flare Games for giving us a preview copy. I'm Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker. Good luck and remember to keep on stacking games.